The H1B guy here, and today, Chats with Charlie, Episode 6, YouTube Live Breakdown, and Top 20 Things I Learned from the Chats with Charlie that was live streamed by the Department of State on August 19th, 2021. But before we get started, I'd like to ask you, if you haven't already, to please subscribe to the H1B Guy channel here on YouTube and like this video so that I can continue to produce more content like this for you. I also wanted to mention the H1B Guy offers a variety of consulting services. I help businesses and individuals solve complex work authorization issues in the recruitment process while bringing awareness to employment-based immigration benefits. If I can help you, please reach out. I'd love to hear how. And you can now book an appointment directly with me through the h1bguy.com. And a reminder that today's post is brought to you by RecruiterNetworks.com, by Path to Canada, and by Perm-Ads.com. Well, hosted for the fourth time by Alyssa, a consular officer with the Department of State and featuring Charles Charlie Oppenheim, Chief of the Visa Control and Reporting Division at the U.S. Department of State, he has worked for the Department of State since 1978 and in control of the Visa Bulletin since 1998. Here are the top 20 things I learned from Episode 6 of Chats with Charlie. 1. Charlie's very concerned about the potential amount of unused numbers under the fiscal year 2021 limits. One of the reasons is that EB1 for China and India was moved to current all the way back in April, and also the very aggressive forward movement that we saw under final action date since then has been in an effort to maximize number use under the fiscal year 2021 limits. Two, USCIS is on track to approve more adjustment of status applications than it has since fiscal year 2005. Three, COVID-19 continues to present many negative issues with operational staff status and the ability to process large amounts of immigrant visa cases. Overseas posts began returning to normal processing in April of this year. Four, USCIS is dealing with an annual limit that is 65% higher than they had last year. Five, Charlie attempts to control the forward movement of final action dates in a manner to avoid retrogression, and he does not expect any retrogression in fiscal year 2022, but if retrogression were required, it would occur much later in the fiscal year. Retrogression typically occurs in August or September in order to avoid any inconvenience. October typically has a new supply of numbers, and they try to recover from any retrogression that may happen in the previous year. 6. India EB2 has been advancing at a rapid pace through July, but the weekly grouping often prevents them from advancing the dates too fast. 7. If processing impact continues to subside during fiscal year 2022, it can be expected that employment use totals will increase dramatically and reduce any potential amount of unused numbers. Just because there are more numbers available for use doesn't mean they will be able to process the cases due to staffing. 8. A surge in applicants is what can cause a final action date to be held for a period of time or, if necessary, to take corrective action via retrogression. 9. He stopped providing available visa number estimates in the monthly visa bulletin because COVID-19 has made it unrealistic for him to provide reliable estimates, but he hopes to provide an updated estimate in the October or November visa bulletin. 10. Once the MVC has determined you are documentarily qualified, you will receive an email for an appointment. You can also check via the MVC SEAC system and access the case summary page. Communication has greatly improved in this regard over the years. 11. Throughout COVID-19, MVCs continue to book appointments based on first-in, first-out manner within each case's visa class. You can check status via the MVC Backlog Report website to view the worldwide data of applicants that have been processed but are pending a documentarily qualified complete status. 12. USCIS Service Center provides Charlie's office with statistical reports prior to his determination of the upcoming month's final action dates 
and application dates that uses as part of his calculations for the monthly visa bulletin. 13. Charlie doesn't expect any major changes for employment-based preferences in October of 2021's bulletin. What you currently see in September is likely what you will see in October. 14. Charlie is taking uh, a, rem a, a, a wait and see approach to whether or not India EB3 dates of filing will advance past January 1st, 2014 in the October 2021 visa bulletin, and that there's absolutely no hope that India EB3 will reach February 2016 for dates of filing in the October bulletin. And he also does not believe that India EB3 will even reach January 1st, 2015 for dates of filing in October's bulletin. 15. Believes that application filing dates except for El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras EB4 is likely to hold for October. There may be a need to move EB2 for China and India, but that will be determined based on information he will receive in the next several weeks. 16. It is Charlie's understanding that USCIS will allow all dates of filing to be used for filing for the month of October. 17. Downgrade applicants have what Charlie described as the best of both worlds. They are pending in the second preference if that date becomes current. First, they get processed there, or if their downgrade comes through and is eligible to get processed, they get processed there instead. There is no disadvantage to the applicant, but it causes heartache for Charlie if he sees a large amount of downgrades he had not been expecting. 18. India EB3 final action dates will not move for the October 2021 visa bulletin or most employment final action dates for a short period of time. 19. Highly unlikely that all applicants that have priority dates with final action dates that were announced for September will be processed by the end of September. And 20. All of the dates that have been moved to maximize number use, but advancing the dates just to advance them isn't necessary. He's following procedures as he would pre-pandemic, but the pandemic isn't allowing maximization. Typical usage is 98% to 98.5% of the annual limits, and this year is an anomaly as to what normally happens. I found episode six of Chats with Charlie to be very sombering again. Uh, what was a lot of excitement and hope that was created during and back to the April Visa Bulletin for October 2021's Visa Bulletin was quickly dashed by Charlie during this episode. Apparently, only movement will be in EB1 and EB2 for China and India and final action dates um, and then for El Salvador, Honduras, Guatemala for EB4 for dates of filing. The one good piece of good news is that USCIS will again accept dates of filing beginning in October, but for how long is anyone's guess. I'll definitely be going back and doing a significant revamp to my looking ahead to the October 2021 post uh, that I did back at the beginning of July, as things have significantly changed in the last six weeks. But the question has to be asked is why continue to advance the dates if for several months now we've been told that the lack of processing capabilities due to COVID is the, the reason that there's going to be a significant amount of unused numbers. Reminder um, that if you want to read the full post on Chats with Charlie, Episode 6, September Visa Bulletin, YouTube Live Breakdown, Top 20 Things I Learned, please check out the H1BGuy.com. And today's post was brought to you by RecruiterNetworks.com, the smart solution for digital perm ads and local job posting since 2001. This national job board network provides recruitment websites in 1,024 major U.S. metro areas. Each local job board is its own portal and is a low-cost resource for immigration recruitment ads and local job postings for all industries and professions with a flat price of $225 per ad or $1,000 per month, regardless of which city you choose. RecruiterNetworks.com. Tell them the H-1B guy sent you. By Path to Canada. 
Path to Canada provides an ideal plan B for high-skilled immigrants currently located in the U.S. whose status may be uncertain. If you're facing an H-1B denial or OPT expiration, don't get caught off guard. Make sure you have a plan B and Path to Canada is your answer. They will gladly help you navigate the process. And if you're interested in finding out more, please be sure to use the link in the video description below. And also by perm-ads.com, the industry leader in providing a seamless experience for employers and immigration attorneys navigating the complex perm recruitment ad phase of the labor certification process. If you want to reduce your costs and overhead associated with perm labor certification recruitment advertising, let perm-ads.com help you. Well, just wanted to ask you again to please like this video subscribe to the h1b guy channel here on youtube and click the bell for notifications so that you're notified anytime we post new content here to this channel if you've made it this far i just want to say thank you for taking the time to watch my video i really appreciate your support the h1b guy your global source for all things h1b